Today we're going to learn the protocol of how to paint a C-3PO miniature. Get it? Protocol? He's a protocol droid? Hi guys, Jonathan from Two Raven Studios. We have one more Star Wars video to cap off this week and we're going to paint a C-3PO miniature from Star Wars Legion. My goal with this miniature is to do a non-metallic metal on it. There's a lot of different ways to do that. A lot of them are more very realistic looking. I'm going to go for something a little bit more cartoony because I have an army of clones and I have them based off the Clone Wars cartoon and that's the feel that I want to give to this miniature as well. Everything's kind of the feel from the Clone Wars cartoon. This video is going to be a little bit different than my normal tutorials because I was kind of making this up as I go. It's been a long time since I did any non-metallic metals. So there's things that if I had restarted now, I would have totally just done this miniature differently. So I'm going to take you through the whole process of what I did. And we'll, at the end, I'm just going to explain how I would have done it if I were to start over. I think it's important to learn that just because something's not coming the way you want it when you're trying to paint doesn't mean you give up. You have to just change techniques, try different stuff until you get something you're happy with. In the end, I'm not completely happy with this, but I need to get the video out, so I kind of ended it where I did. I'm probably going to do some more work on it, and maybe I'll post some pictures up once I have it fully completed to my satisfaction. But let's get into it. The way I started is the miniature has been primed with a gray primer, and then I lay down a base coat of sulfuric yellow from P3 Paints. It's just a very light yellow. I use the airbrush to get, lay down that base coat. You don't have to. So again, prime gray with that sulfuric yellow over top. I would have changed a lot of things, but that's still how I would have started no matter what I was doing. Let's grab your brushes and let's get into it. I'm starting out just with my normal black that is a mix of contrast black templar with a black paint and we're painting the area around the waist and also the gaps in the backs of the knees. Next up is mediocre from P3 Paints. The thing you need to remember when you're doing non-metallic metals particularly, always important but very important with non-metallic metals, is where your light source is. So mine is going to be above and to the left of the miniature from our perspective or the miniature's right. So I'm placing the shadows with that in mind. So the darker areas are going to get this that are away from that light source. Also, the tops of panels facing the light source are also going to get that color. That's something that's going to be important later on for giving us that non-metallic feel to this. We also want to think about the shapes of the pieces we're painting. So a lot of this miniature is cylinders, especially the arms and legs. And cylinders, when they're metallic, they highlight by having vertical lines of color down them. So we want to focus on that when we're doing the arms and legs, those vertical lines of this color as well. I'm not worrying about blending right now. I'm just worrying about putting this color down in the areas that I want darker. The other thing I'm doing before the next step is painting the lower right leg troll blood a highlight. If you're unaware, C-3PO's lower right leg is actually silver, not gold. So we're painting it that to get it out of the way for now. So before I move to the next step, I want to kind of explain what I'm going to do. So we finished with putting the mediocre into the shadows. There's two ways I use the mediocre. So as you can see, my light source is kind of coming from this angle down this way. So you have the areas over here that are in shadow from the light source. You also have areas facing the light source that have got some of the darker color, like right here's a good example of that. The way I'm going to further darken them is going to depend on where they are. So the areas here that are in shadow, I'm going to put darker areas further down in the shadow, like right in here. You can kind of see I already started to do it because I was testing out the color. So further shadow down there. The ones that are facing the light, where the darker color is going to go is not up in this corner. It's actually down here at the edge where it's touching the lighter color. The reason is when you're painting non-metallics, you want to make it look metallic. And one of the ways you can do that is put a very dark area next to a very light area. So I'm going to darken this area right here. And then when we get to the highlights, I will lighten this area right here. That way this dark 
will be right next to this light and it will make your eye think it looks metallic. So that's the goal in the next step is we've mixed now bootstrap leather into the mediocre and we're going to further darken the shadows. The way I'm going to do that though is with two brush blending and so I'm going to explain shortly what that is. So I'll just use the back of my hand like I was painting it. So for two brush blending you need two brushes. I keep one in my mouth and you might not want to lick your paint and depending on the paint you definitely might not want to do it depending if it's toxic or not but I just use saliva because you want to keep this brush wet and I just use the saliva by keeping it in my mouth. So that brush is in my mouth, the other brush has the paint on it. What you do is the brush with the paint you dab the paint where you want it to be darkest and then with the brush that's just moistened you're going to go into that paint and blend it out. So the one brush that's going to put it on, the other brush blends it out. When you blend it out it's important that the end of the brush is in the paint and I'm feathering it out this way. I don't want to push the paint like this where my brush is pointing away from where the paint was. My brush is pointing into the origination of the paint and then I feather it out. So always make sure when you're doing this two brush blending the brush that's doing the blending, the tip of it is pointing where the paint is coming from and you're moving it away from it with a little bit of, see I'm doing that wiggle motion as I move it out to blend it out. So we're going to do it on the miniature, I just want to give you an idea of how it works so you know what to do as you're watching me paint the miniature. So let's do that now. We're going to further darken the shadows on the miniature itself. We're using bootstrap leather mixed with mediocre putting it into the shadows and then feathering it out with the second brush. From here on out, the camera was focusing more on my hand than the miniatures, so I don't have great footage, but just here's another clip of me putting it in on with the one brush and feathering it out with the second. The next step, we're going in with a mix of sulfuric yellow and Minoth white highlight and adding in highlights. So we don't need to blend this just like when we put down the mediocre we weren't blending it we're just putting this where we want highlights think about the cylinders of the arms and legs when you're putting it down and just move around the miniature putting it wherever you think the highlights need to go again it's focusing more on my hand on the miniature sorry about that you get the idea of what i'm doing though It was at this point that I really was not happy with how this miniature was coming out and decided to switch gears. I decided to switch to my beloved oil paints, which was a mistake. I would have used oil paints towards the end of this process, but not right now. Just follow along and at the end, again, I'll explain how I would have done this differently. So I started out with Burnt Sienna for the oil paints. It's thinned down with Mineral Spirits and I'm doing the wash that I do on most of my miniatures. I definitely would have done this step at the very end of the paint job but I would not have done it right now. The other way I'm using Burnt Sienna right now is a little less diluted and kind of shading areas that I want it darker. Was a first attempt at making things darker was not the best way of going about it. Again I would not have done this step right now and I would not have done the shading with the Burnt Sienna at all. I would just would have done this pin wash at the very end. And watch what I'm doing now just know this would have been the last step I would have done if I would have changed things. I also used Naples Yellow Light Oil Paint to, for highlights undiluted. I would have totally skipped this step if I would to redo this. So you can watch me do it now, but I would have not have done this. So with all that oil paint needing time to dry, I switched over to the leg. And basically I used Troll Blood Highlight mixed with Great Coat Gray to shade certain areas. It was the same thing I did with the Mediocre on the gold parts. And then I went in with Sickly Skin to highlight those same areas. Sickly Skin is almost white, and a lot of times I use it to replace white. It just has a little bit of a tone in it, give a little bit more visual interest. And this model, I use this completely instead of white. So this is just what I did to complete the leg as that oil was drying on the body. I did a little bit more work on the leg. I wound up adding in some Payne's Gray oil paint too found out that the tube of Payne's Gray I have actually has a 
hole in it, which wasn't fun. But anyway, you can kind of see what I did there. I'm gonna wait for that oil paint to dry before I move on, but now we're gonna move back to the gold armor. So, I'm still not happy with it. We're still going to be playing around with it more. Now I'm gonna be using contrast to do that. So I have this little palette set up here. So, this is Iand in Yellow, Gorgrunt of Fur, and Wildwood. I also have two wells here. This one's just filled with water, and this one is filled with flow medium. So it helped me thin it down. So what I'm going to be doing next is glazing this miniature using those colors to try to see what we can do and pop it up. After I'm done that, I'm going to have to go back in with some lighter colors to really pop out the highlights, I know. But right now, I just want to kind of play with it some more and pop up the contrast and actually make it a little bit more yellow than it is because I think the color needs to be a little bit more yellow. So let's get playing around with these colors and see what we can come up with. Like that pop-up said, I did not use the Wildwood. It was too dark. What I'm doing is using the Iandin Yellow in the lighter areas, Gurgrunta Fur in the darker areas, and using both water and the glaze medium to feather them out. This worked really well. This is where I feel I started doing right with this miniature for all the things I've done wrong with it. So you can see I place the Gorgon of Fur in the darker areas. Now I'm getting some of the glaze medium on my brush and feathering it out. This was a very nice way of doing these shadows and highlights. And sorry again, the camera's focusing on my hand instead of the miniature. But this is a really cool way to glaze things and give them different color using the different mediums as well as the contrast paints. I'm using an airbrush flow improver as my medium but you could use the Lamy medium or the contrast medium that GW makes as well to do something very similar. So just keep moving around the Gorgon to furs in the darker spots and then the Iand and yellows in the lighter spots feathering it out with the different mediums and the water that we have. So next up, we're going to highlight. So I have Sickly Skin, Minoth White Highlight, and Sulfuric Yellow. And I'm kind of just picking the colors that make sense for the areas that I'm highlighting. Sometimes I will start with the Sulfuric Yellow and then go up to Sickly Skin. For some of the lighter areas, some of the darker areas are just going to get a Sulfuric Yellow Highlight. Just remember the direction the light is coming from so you know where to place the highlights. So a lot of them are going to be on the ridges of the edge of things. Those arms and legs are those cylinders again, so we want those lines. And as I talked about earlier, you want to have light areas next to very dark areas. It gives the illusion that the surface is metallic. You can watch me move around the miniature painting to get an idea of where those highlights should go. I also use the sickly skin to add even more highlights into that lower right leg that's silver at this stage too so I use the same color for everything you may have noticed a few steps ago I painted in the areas of wires in the mid body there it's just I picked a red and a blue and a gray and just painted some of those wires no, no big deal nothing special I just looked at some reference pictures and picked some colors that looked great to me
so here's the miniature as it stands now. I still want to refine some things. Starting to get much happier with it though. The thing I did totally right and how I would have done it differently if I had done it again is I would have just started with that sulfuric yellow base and gone straight in with the contrast to add in the shadows that I wanted. I really liked how the contrast worked on the miniature and turned out so I would have done the base coat, the contrast paints, some highlights, and then I would have used the oils just to define all the little panels and that sort of thing. That is how I would have done this miniature had I started it all again. But it was a learning process and this is the result so far. That's the miniature as it stands now. Still not totally happy, but I can keep on working it and keep fix it. The thing I want you guys to take most out of this is never be afraid to paint something because you're afraid you're going to mess it up. That's how you grow. That's how you learn new things by experimenting. This experiment I wasn't totally happy with, but I did learn something. That contrast with the flow improver, using it to glaze, works really well. And I would definitely want to try out some future projects specifically geared towards that paint style. So you can look forward to that in the future. But if you ever make a mistake, there's ways to fix it. If you're still not happy with it, you can always just prime again and paint over. Never be afraid to paint because you're afraid you're going to mess things up. That's the takeaway I want you guys to have from this. And it's why I showed you my mistakes as we went along. So hopefully you got something out of this. And hopefully you've enjoyed all the Star Wars videos this week. Next week we're going to be back to a more regular schedule. I'm not going to be doing a video every day. It's a lot of stress on me that I don't feel like having. So that painting gold video that's been supposed to be out as my first video and still not out. It's going to be out next week. It was going to be out today, but I delayed it to next week because I was doing the Star Wars thing this week. So, till next time, keep on gaming and paint your minis. <laughs>